Okay, so it, it was clear from the from the very beginning that uh, that the the diversity of CRISPR systems was huge. Uh, so and that that fits with the idea that that uh, that there is an ongoing arms race between the uh, the host, so the the bacteria and the archaea, versus the the, the viruses and the plasmids. Uh, so so uh, and uh, the reason that uh, that. Uh, that there is this high diversity is because of that arms race. So, so when uh, uh, when there is this uh, immunity generated against viruses, then there will be some uh, some escape mutants among the the viruses. So, so many of them will be killed, but some of them uh, will have a mutation that kind of saves them or allows them to to escape the uh, def defense system because it, only a single mutation at the DNA level is, can, can be sufficient to, uh, to, uh, to escape. And that means that, that then, um, uh, that then uh, new tricks have to be invented. And it can be either by uh, incorporating a new spacer, but, but also, I mean, sometimes, uh, the, the, uh, and, and more and more is known about that now, also the, the viruses, viruses are able to, uh, to uh, develop really anti-CRISPR systems and, and that uh, is, 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 is I think a main driver of, of, the, of the whole diversity of the system so these anti-CRISPR systems they, uh, they, uh, they really kind of uh, uh, inhibit the functionality of, of, of a complete system so then a novel system or maybe, maybe severe um, um, uh, adaptation of the system is required to, to, to again uh, uh, escape that uh, particular thing, and that, that's what I mean. So it's so it's this ongoing uh, warfare that that generates this huge diversity. And now uh, talking about this diversity, um, so so there is now a classification uh, talking about the class one system and the class two system. Well, the well-known Cas9 and and now also the the CPF1 or or, or uh, Cas12, those are being used a lot for genome editing. So so many people know about these ones, uh, but also I mean in the early days we focused on the other system, so a Class1 system uh, from from uh, uh, a well-known uh, bacterium E. coli, uh, and so we uh, we uh, managed to to reveal fundamental details in the early days so that that's exactly now 10 years ago that that we did the crucial experiments and what we learned from those experiments was that that uh, small uh, RNAs were being used as uh, as guides and that uh, that these uh, guides um, uh, allowed for targeting of DNA so RNA guides tar targeting of uh, of DNA and uh, the, the the crucial experiment we did, we uh, we uh, we tried to uh, to make uh, E. coli resistant against a particular uh, virus, and using the the available sequence of this virus, we uh, that allowed us to uh, to generate a design uh, CRISPR. So that design CRISPR then had the information of the of the virus, and we did so in two two orientations, and. Because uh, so so uh, the, from from that from that uh, um, uh, CRISPR DNA, the guide RNA is being uh, extracted or it's being transcribed as, as RNA, and that then gives rise to the uh, to the guides. But by because both turned out to be uh, to be functional, we could really conclude that it, the DNA is the target. So what we did there in in those in those. Uh, uh, crucial experiment I would say is, is that we, we demonstrated that from this design CRISPR we could generate RNA guides that could target basically any, uh, any DNA that we wanted. So, uh, and we did so in a, in, a, in a different E. coli strain, so we transformed the whole uh, system to another E. coli strain. So, so basically this was the very first example of, uh, of genome editing.